in the response from nurses, doctors, and others saying either they've seen stuff like this happen or heard about it from other healthcare professionals. I hope and pray that it's just panicking and that it, uh, but still people are being disappeared. That's a huge issue. And the controlled corporate press is going along with it. Notice they had the EAS alert take over all the TV in the country last week and they claim it was a mistake. A lot of big stuff's going on. We're going to break it all down. But here is a Jakari Jackson piece put together, a montage with Captain America that I think is extremely powerful where art imitates life or maybe vice versa. Then we'll come back and get into a bunch of other key news. Stay with us. Do you want to kill Nazis? I don't want to kill anyone. I don't like bullies. I don't care where they're from. I believe Captain America was a composite character that really kind of captured the essence of that generation. There's another analogy to be taken from Captain America, and that is that that generation and America in general has essentially fallen asleep like Captain America did as you see him wake up in the second Captain America movie to find that he's living in an authoritarian police state. For a second day in a row, a group of World War II vets literally took down a barrier blocking off the World War II memorial in Washington, D.C. Harry needs his barricades back! Wow, you seem pretty chipper for someone who just found out they died for nothing. Wow. I go protect Iraqis in Iraq, and I come back and I find that my fellow Americans are being attacked by police. <laughs> I'm well aware of the danger. I've been eight years in combat. For once, we're way ahead of the curve. By holding a gun to everyone on Earth and calling it protection. The police and National Guard going street by street, house to house, and instructions to disarm anyone inside. We're going to neutralize a lot of threats before they even happen. That's the punishment usually came after the crime. And when they say, I want my lawyer, you tell them, shut up. Your time is expired. Get a lawyer. You're an enemy combatant. You guys did some nasty stuff. Yeah. We compromised. Sometimes in ways that made us not sleep so well. Well, when I was in Afghanistan, they usually kept us outside these buildings and the other government agency guys, probably like DEA, CIA and all of that, they would go into these kind of rooms like that, exactly. And they would be uh, torturing people from in there. Horrible scream to hear a grown person like that go being tortured. And you're watching as uh, this opium is being grown. We provide them security, we're providing them resources, and we're providing them alternatives. Captain America is a fugitive from S.H.I.E.L.D. With all due respect, if S.H.I.E.L.D. is conducting a manhunt for Captain America, we deserve to know why. You have a lot of people that are coming out of the military that have the ability and the knowledge to, to build IEDs and, and to defeat law enforcement techniques. This is only going to get worse once it starts. And again, there's no veterans doing anything right now. No IEDs. They are literally getting the police to pick a fight with veterans. You are standing in my brain. How did you get here? Invited. It's Operation Paperclip after World War II. Shield recruited German scientists with strategic value. They thought I could help their cause. Operation Paperclip explores the secret military program that hired scientists who used slave labor to build the V-2 rocket and others who used concentration camp victims for human experiments. The responsibility for the staggering loss of life and property is uniformly placed on Hitler and the Nazis, but excluded from the official history is the fact that Hitler and the National Socialists would not have risen to power without the help of international bankers and American and German corporations. She's disabling security protocols and dumping all the secrets onto the internet. Including Hydra's. And Shields. What about Bradley Manning? Yeah. What about Bradley yeah, Manning? What about all those people he betrayed? Look at all those people he betrayed. I think the revelations are terrible because they were, they were revealed. Um, what's his name? Um, Snowden. Yeah, Snowden. Uh, I think he's a traitor. What about the others? Are you planning a rescue mission? You think about what is going on with the Veterans Administration, the hospital, and the fact that we have veterans that are dying because they're on a wait list. You talk about Sergeant Tamarisi and his situation. I just want you to know, Ken. Personal! something that I've been upset about and raising Cain about, and so I'm going to ask you about it. And that's this uh, right-wing extremism report that uh, 
is mailed out to law, all law enforcement officials in the United States. Uh, I've apologized for that report. Uh, it was not authorized to be distributed. This is a freedom. This is fear. S.H.I.E.L.D. takes the world as it is, not as we'd like it to be. It's getting damn near past time for you to get with that program, Cap. Don't hold your breath. Rallying patriots worldwide in defense of human liberty. It's Alex Jones. Well, great job, Jakari Jackson, with that uh, special piece. We like to do that, take actual news that's taking place, integrate it in with either old news or with fiction or with different uh, pieces of literature to demonstrate common archetypal threads throughout history. We are skipping this network break. We are live broadcasting worldwide. I am your host, Alex Jones, and we are here Monday through Friday, 12 noon to 3 p.m. Eastern. That is 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Mountain, 9 a.m. to noon Pacific, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. I got to hand it to the New York Times. They either put out horrible, deceptive lies that are over-the-top hoaxes, or they put out really good, serious investigative journalism. I think the New York Times overall for mainstream media is one of the best publications out there for film reviews, you name it. The problem is when they're being political, they will use all the credibility of all the amazing writers and journalists they have. They will dump on them in a big way by injecting incredible deception. Whether it's lies about aluminum tubes and yellow cake from Niger for WMDs in Iraq or saying that the Liberty Movement are a bunch of terrorists. The New York Times does it a lot, but every day I read the New York Times, there are amazing stories. There's not a plug for the New York Times. I'm just noticing two articles I want to cover right now are out of the New York Times. Law lets IRS seize accounts on suspicion, no crime required. And you can't write an article about this and not say it's horrible tyranny and oppressive and out of North Korea, which they basically say. You can't report on something like this and then not illustrate that it's super bad because other news outlets will report on things like this but they'll say it's wonderful msnbc whenever the irs is uh, shaking down churches and going after pro-lifers and going after libertarians and conservatives they say good arrest them all good take their 501c3 away uh, good uh, audit everybody uh, good to get rid of free speech on the internet uh, tax the drudge report with the Federal Trade Commission or with the Securities and Exchange Commission or uh, with the FCC uh, bring in the Federal Election Commission. That's all been called for in the last year. There's new articles out today. And see, Drudge is the big elephant. So they can shoot the lead elephant. They can shoot all the other ones right beside it and right behind it. There it is. Dems on FCC move to regulate Internet Campaign blogs and drudge. That's being reported by Fox News. And I went and looked. That's what they said. So, I don't know. I went off on a jag about the New York Times. But it is a tale of two cities. Best of times, worst of times. I read this article yesterday. And I didn't do the show. David Knight did. Did an excellent job. I listened to it. Had some family issues I had to attend to. And I said, David, you ought to read this whole article on air. And I know he read some of it. But I want to read the whole article on air later if I have time. Because it lets you know that we are living in an incredible tyranny. If they can take your life savings and you never even get to see a judge or a jury and there's no indictment, no arrest... Because the IRS agent claimed it showed structuring by a 70-something-year-old woman who owns a small restaurant and who has no criminal record because daily she would deposit the money for safety in a, quote, bank, and it was never above $10,000.
that's because at a diner, a little diner, usually it was not more than $1,000 that she would make a day. People are using credit cards. And they said the mere fact, and they list a bunch of these cases, that you didn't ever put in more than $10,000 to trigger a suspicious report. One time I I'd, I'd had a, a big event in L.A. with several thousand attendants, and we've been selling books and DVDs and made about $20,000. Sounds like a lot, but only half that's profit, and you got to pay for stuff, pay for getting everybody out there. But we made about $20,000 over two days. And each day, because it was on a Friday and a Saturday, we would go over to Bank of America at the time, was the account I had, and I would go in there, and they would go, are you sure you want to deposit this? This will trigger a suspicious report. And I'm like, what do you mean? I just sold a bunch of videos and books. Yeah. And then we're going to pay the stupid tax of the private Federal Reserve on this. Americans are so cowardly now that I've wanted to give out bonuses before at Christmas party, maybe $200 here, $200 there. But to 40-something people, it's like five, $6,000. And you go to the bank, and they're and they're acting like you're a criminal to do it. And I even had somebody in my office, I want to say cowardly, but like, really, you're going to get cash out? I mean, what? How did we ever get like this? And now the IRS, with a straight face, tens of thousands of times a year, goes in to mainly mom and pop restaurants and shoe repair stores and things that they know full well, full well, do a cash business. And the smart ones, I guess, just never put it in the bank. They just go spend it and do stuff. No, no. You put it in a the bank, there's, there's not even a law. They claim it's a law. The New York Times doesn't get that exactly right. It's, 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 it's the interpretation of an asset forfeiture seizure regulation that the feds put in, and that's how cops will pull you over in corrupt jurisdictions and say they've been federalized in that they get the money from the feds. They seize it. It goes to the feds. And they pull an old lady over as their favorite target because they, they know the M.O., uh, of older women, especially depression era, most of them are dead now, to carry a lot of cash on them because they don't trust banks. Gee, wonder why. They'll have three, $4,000. Pull over that old lady driving a new Cadillac. Ma'am, you got cash in there? Well, yes, Sonny, I got $2,000. Really? They screwed up once with the state police. She was a multi-billion dollar uh, oil baroness whose famous husband had died. She had like 5000 in her purse, chicken feed. And uh, she sued them and made a big deal out of it. They took her money. They just said, uh, you come on to the station, we're going to test these bills. We find drugs on any of it, we're going to indict you. They said, we're taking the money. And, she, and they said, if you don't like it, come on into the station. We'll go ahead and uh, you know, arrest you and then indict you right there. Or you can just let me have the money. Well, she drove on down the road and got her lawyers involved. But the average person doesn't have a billion and a half dollars in the bank. And isn't an old Texan who thinks it's wrong to have cops grab money out of your purse. This is pure theft on a monumental stage and they want to hide it in plain view like it's okay it wasn't bad that i didn't want to get mugged in my hotel room for twenty thousand dollars and then i went and put it in the bank to then have the accountants run it through the whole system but the way the irs works is they don't care they will get 96 percent conviction rates in irs court and they know people are innocent they've told people i know treasury agents others that we've had on that we're criminals. We know you're innocent. We want to put you in jail to shut you up. Congressmen I've interviewed, like Hansen, no criminal record, fighting the IRS in his committee. They arrested him. He beat him, arrested him again, beat him again. The next time, threw him on a plane and then drove him around for over a month in a, in a vehicle till his feet burst, shackled, defecating all over himself. This is a criminal mafia, and everyone thinks groveling to them will protect you. It won't. It's illegitimate. It, it's paid to the private Federal Reserve. People say, well, then why do you pay it? Because I want to get the message out. I want to fight tyranny. I want to have every I dotted, every T crossed, triple accounting firms, not even taking some of the exemptions so that when they do try to set us up, I am lily white, like the driven snow. Nothing on us. But the system doesn't care. So this is their war on small businesses. You should go read the article. Another New York Times article. In Cold War, U.S. spy agency used 1,000 Nazis to basically command the CIA, FBI, and other agencies. Well, sure.
People like Klaus Barbie. Stay with us. I'm Alex Jones. We're on the 